that's why the core idea, at least what happened, we should analyze once. Huh? Okay, there's a photo diode. So I'll, I'll reverse bias it. Okay, let's uh, begin like this. What is a photodiode? You can see photodiode, which will convert light into electricity. Mm -hmm. So I think let, let's not bother big here because already know, we know reverse bias, how reverse bias diode will work out. So th those ideas, what happen? We are going to implement here. Okay, let's directly get into. So a light is emitted. So this is the incident lighter. With the light, I'll make the light to fall on the depletion layer. This one. Then, uh, first we'll study what is the reverse bias. I'll, I'll come to the incident light, this is. Incident light on a diode. What is the reverse bias? So forget about that incident light. What is the reverse bias? Positive terminal. So what it does, it will pull this electron. It will pull this electron. Uh, and this electron will take shape like this. So without depletion, it keeps on increases here. No? This electron, this electron will come here and this electron will take place here. Similarly, there's a negative terminal. What it does, it will push electrons. And will be captured by this. All, all when it all when it captures electron will get valence electron, and and this all will pull out that electron. So what's happening? The width of depletion layer, width of depletion layer is increasing. How the majority carriers they move away from junction, electrons will move like this, all will move like this. Width of depletion layer increases. I think that this what happens here. Along with that, what will happen to this minority carrier? This all is a positive. And there's a positive terminal. So it will get some now some support no. Are there some hundred will crossing? No, because of this bias, more than hundred will cross. So it will cross like this. So I'm interested now the minority carrier current. I'm interested in that minority carrier current here. And similarly, this one also. It will move like this. Along with this, what we get? We'll get a all electron pair due to thermal agitation and electron all pair will be generated. And here also we'll show one. So no covalent bond will break up here. Now why do this covalent bond? So any any electron generating depletion layer will will move like this. Because any reason, because there's an electrostatic field. And any hole generated will go like this here. I'm, I'm taking different colors, huh? this one. So this is due to the moment of that one. So like this, what happened? We'll get a reverse current. What should be the direction of reverse current? Here, the electron. I think it's best take help of the cell. The cell will send free electrons. So from that, what happened? We can undo it. So this is the direction of the reverse current. Let, let me take small letter, huh? because capital letters I'm using for uh, the intensity of incident light here. Okay, this is what all happens. As increase reverse bias, uh, width of depletion that increases, more covalent bonds will break up, more minority carriers generated, and moment of more minority carriers occur, then the reverse current will keep on increase. The reverse current will keep on. And what should have what will happen to forward bias current? More like a major the number of majority carriers crossing the depletion rate, the number will decrease. I am not bothered. And definitely when I go and check it, no, the minority carrier current will be more than the majority carrier current. 
the diffusion current. So like a number of majority carriers crossing junction, the number will keep on decrease as they increase the reverse bias. I think already we know that. So like we show, we used to show diffusion current and this is like a drift current. So definitely reverse bias, which current will be more? The drift current will be more. Okay, I agree now. Okay, let's come for this. I am now, the, the, like I'll, I'll make the light, in, I'll make the light to incident on this. Incident light. So let there be some light incident on it. It can be infrared, ultraviolet, or visible, anything that can be. So I'll make the light incident on this. When this light is made to incident on a coal and bone. So when do that photon can liberate electron? You go back to the atomic structure. We had a discussion of like this. No? If a light is incident on a coal and bone, when do that incident photon <coughs> can liberate minority carriers? I, I'm saying that liberate and there'll be electrostatic field. We are not discussing Jenner effect or all that one here. So in case of reverse bias, what will happen? O will create more number of minority carriers, the electrostatic field. Delta chat with the reverse bias, I'm going to keep it fixed value. I'm not going to increase it. C certain reverse bias, I'll keep it. I'll, I'll finish out. I'll, I'll make it fixed here. This I'm not going to vary it. Keep it fixed here. So this I just reverse bias it. Okay, leave it. Now what happened? This light. Now let's come to this one. If the incident light, if it strikes a coal and bond, it's as good as like a photon striking hydrogen atom. I need to excite hydrogen atom. So now the energy of the incident photon is such that if it can liberate minority carriers and any minority carrier generated here. So this electron will expensive force, this whole will expensive force like this. So now there's another possibility, you know, if a light is incident on a depletion layer and the energy of incident photon is such that if it can liberate, if it can break covalent bond, what do we get? We get minority carriers like that. Certain beam of light, I'll make it to focus on the depletion layer. Because of that, what we get? Large number of covalent bonds will break up. And large number of minority carriers will be generated. And what will happen to this reverse current? Will increase. I'll increase the intensity of light. If I increase intensity of light, more photons are incident. More covalent bonds will break up. More minority carriers are generated. If more minority carriers generated, more movement of minority carriers and what will happen to reverse current will increase. So what's happening here now? Shall I say it is responding for light, intensity of light. So how this intensity of light and reverse current, some sort of relationship is there. As increase intensity of light, more photons. I think that's what intensity definition, no? It's a measure of number of photons emitted per second. It's nothing but the intensity there. So if I increase intensity of light, more photons will be incident on depletion layer. I'm not changing the wavelength. Are you trying to understand? I'm not bothered wavelength here. What I'm bothered? I'm bothered about the intensity of incident light. So as I increase, in, in, increase in, intensity of incident light, number of photons will increase, number of covalent bonds breaking up will increase, number of minority carriers generated increases, then more minority carriers will cross junction, the drift current will increase, the reverse current will increase. So how this diode is responding for the intensity of intensity light. So shall I say photo diode or a photo detector? I want to detect a light. I'll use this one. So where do we use this? Suppose say to count the number of visitors for a given place. I think you can see that uh, at the entrance. You have no. So what I do is like a, here I'll keep a photo diode. I'll reverse bias it. Then here what happen? A, a light, a specific light that one. So LED I'll take it. So one, one LED I kept it here. So when when nobody is passing through it, what happen? This light will be incident directly like this here. Then if some person walks, if some person walks and, and if he just when it's walking here, when he comes here, he will block the light falling onto photodiode. No? Falling on photodiode. So definitely when there'll be change in intensity of the light falling on the photodiode, 
earlier there was a light falling now there is no light then what will happen to current through the photodiode will change so how many changes are produced for all one day so those many persons visited those many persons passed through it those many visitors or or what is another method shall i appoint one safety person i'll ask him to count okay today how many visitors came to our shop so how much you have to pay 15000 rupees what is the cost of photodiode 10 rupees led 10 rupees the whole everything circuit 1000 rupees what is the life span of it easily 10 15 20 years service charge okay put per 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 annum per per annum it will be around say 200 300 rupees it will come any repair comes okay even if it get damage i'll bring one other one easily for years it will come without any maintenance the all circuit display circuit is needed no counter everything so that everything will come 1000 rupees here so security guard to count number of visitors 15000 rupees per month the equipment 1000 rupees just install it finish all so like this open i can count the number of visitors okay it's having a wide photo detector a good example remote okay nowadays we don't go and switch on and off no with the remote only we are managing now we have come even the remote fans and tube lights everything everything uh, getting the remote no we know to go little how it is possible in the television or pen there'll be photo diode will be there when you press a remote what that remote will do it will will emit infrared light infrared led will be there it will send that infrared and that light when it falls on the tv no the photo diode will be there it will detect and it will switch on the circuit and we'll get it so like that when we have that remote works on this one hmm? so that uh, remote operation all that based on this one photo diode very 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 important again in the applications so what is the key idea of photo diode so what it responds it responds for incident light it responds for incident so what it does it will convert light energy into electrical energy reverse of led photo diode so for for that it is operated in operated in reverse bias mode very small topic it will get over within another 5 minutes i'll wind up next solar cell is that will wind up it is operated in reverse bias there is a thing it converts light energy into electrical energy it converts light energy into electrical energy then next again uh after this uh, where the light should be made to fall shall i make the light to fall on p type n type or on the depletion layer light should be incident on depletion layer okay i should make the light to incident that's why if you purchase the photo diode no it will come like this one hole will be there and you should make the light to fall in that hole it will be covered everything and this will be all so the light should fall here this is a photo diode ordinary diode will come just simple like this okay when when you purchase photo diode you no know, will be like this hmm. ordinary diode will be just simple in this way so they'll give covering and and they say and they'll they'll give some say, like a sheet transparent glass they'll keep it here so that the light should fall here this will be the symbol like this practically it'll appear like this the photo diode in this region the light should appear here as so like the light should be incident only in this region that, that's what happen they'll give window transparent glass will be kept here no light must be incident on depletion layer for its operation no any any conditions shall be put any light no again again go back e equal to sc by lambda what is the energy of energy band of semiconductors one electron or so what is the lambda no no this will be 
12400 armstrongs so what should be the uh, condition now the incident light in order to make the photodiode to work so what should be the wavelength shall i say greater than or should be less than so what is the energy band of semiconductor one electron volt if a photon comes with energy less than this what it will do yes it will break up the covalent bond because that's so the energy of photon anything greater than or equal to one electron volt sufficient no to break up that covalent to the minority carriers if energy of the incident light if it less than one electron volt we can't do anything so therefore shall we put like if you are using germanium silicon if photodiodes made up of germanium silicon so what should be the wavelength of incident fo photons wavelength of the incident light should be this one here so shall we put greater than or equal what you suggest it should be less than no if the energy of the incident light if it is less than or equal to this s it will liberate the photoelectrons it will liberate the electrons here or it will liberate the minority carriers in the repletion layer if it is greater than this not possible so therefore what type of material you are using for photodiode and what is the band gap and what is the incident light it matters here so shall we put a condition like this one lambda should be what like less than or equal to sc by e. and what is e e should be band gap I'll, I'll, i'll take it out this so we'll we'll make it a generalized why why only germanium silicon let it be generalized here lambda equal to lambda should be less than or equal to this one what is e e is a band gap and what is lambda
some problem is there mm -hmm. can you hear me now hmm. i'll continue I'll, 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 uh, the, that other current i'll show by different colors like, like this we show it and this is the not current it's the intensity i1 i2 i3 I1, I2 and I3 are intensity of incident light. On a photodiode. I1, I2 and I3 are intensity of incident light on a photodiode. As they increase intensity, number of photons incident on a photodiode will increase. Number of and, and the number of coolant bonds breaking up in depletion will increase. And because of that happened, the minority carrier will increase and the current reverse current will increase this four year. So any relation between I1, I2, I3, shall we put I3 greater than I2 greater than I1. As they increase the intensity of light incident on photodiode, number of photons will increase, number of covalent bonds breaking up will increase, number of minority carrier increases, reverse current increases. So therefore the current will be. We are not discussing breakdown. Huh? So try to avoid that one. It's of no use. It should not be operated at breakdown region. So therefore, I will provide reverse by say some around 3 volt or 4 volt. Suppose the breakdown voltage is say some 10 volt. I'll adjust the EMF say like a, say, so say like a 3 volt. Then I'll increase the intensity of light here. Th this idea. Uh, get, getting the picture now? Uh, no. Uh, f first thing. Uh, let's go for if I vary the wavelength I'll keep intensity I'll vary the wavelength anything will happen to the curve if you vary the wavelength okay let's come for this one if you vary the wavelength if you vary the wavelength energy of photon will increase if if I vary the wavelength energy of photon will change but what point the number of photons in a beam of light will remain same if number of photons remains same then Number of coolant bonds breaking up will be same. Number of minority carriers generated will be same. So, will you get any change in the current flowing, reverse current flowing through the diode? No, it will not change. So, therefore, so as you vary wavelength, <coughs> you'll get one curve finish over. So, the as you vary the wavelength of incident light on a photodiode, the reverse current will not change. If you vary the, if you increase intensity, yes. But what is the minimum wavelength it should have? What is the wavelength? S there's limit no less than or equal to HC by E. That, that's the minimum. At least what point it should have H, HC by E, the wavelength. If it is greater than that, then we don't get any th this current will not be there. Huh? Then we'll get this current only. Uh, able to analyze. So therefore, uh, wavelength will is not at all any parameter. Only thing is is it less than or equal to HC by E? less than SC, SC by E, okay, finish or finish. Then, has a very intensity to come. So therefore, the photodiode, to what it is responding, to the wavelength or the, the intensity of light, to the intensity of light. Okay, we have to give explanation as, as intensity of Incident light as the intensity of incident light increases, number of photons striking the depletion layer increases. Now, what it will increase as the number of photons striking the depletion layer increases. the number of breaking up of covalent bond increases. This will lead to this will lead to increase in minority carriers 
और ओल इलेक्ट्रॉन पे बेटर उस लगे दिस विल इंक्रीज इन ओल इलेक्ट्रॉन पे जनरेटेड और माइनोरिटी कैरी जनरेटेड इन डिप्लीशन ले एंड हेंस रिवर्स करेंट थ्रू डायोड इंक्रीजेस इफ यू डिक्रीज वेव लेंथ एनर्जी ऑफ फोटोन विल इंक्रीज बट नंबर ऑफ फोटोन रिमेन सेम सो वॉट इंटेंसिटी वॉट लैपन टू इंटेंसिटी ऑफ लाइट रिमेन्स कॉन्स्टेंट इंटेंसिटी ऑफ लाइट कॉन्स्टेंट नंबर ऑफ फोटोन स्ट्राइकिंग द डिप्रेशन रिमेन्स कॉन्स्टेंट सो रिवर्स करेंट विल नॉट चेंज सो आई आई जस्ट पुट ए स्टेटमेंट हिर एस एज वेव लेंथ ऑफ फोटोन एट द वेव लेंथ ऑफ इंसिडेंट light decrease decreases the number of photons incident on depletion layer remains constant so reverse current remains constant so there won't be any impact of the change in the current flowing through the photodiode if you vary the wavelength provided it should not be greater than sc by lambda i think there's one pure condition that already we have put it here okay this is about the photodiode okay now i will forward bias it what characteristics will get it in forward bias the similar to ordinary diode If you forward by say photo diode, similar to ordinary diode, then I will vary intensity of light here. No changes. I'll vary the wavelength. No changes. Hmm. Ah, now this reverse current is due to what? This current is due to what? Due to elect all electron pair generated due to thermal agitation, and also the all electron pair generated due to incident light. Is it okay? So I think I, I should write here. So this is due to what? this current is due to what due to all electron pair generated due to thermal agitation only okay i'm writing uh, what about here Now what what we have to give either either anywhere for I'll show it here now due to all electron pair generated due to incident light and thermal agitation I agree this uh, which will be greater which all electron will be greater due to incident light only the all electron pair that are generated due to incident light what happen that will dominate over the all electron pair that are generated due to thermal agitation that's why we see the variation are able to notice here so which electron all pair generated will be more due to incident light due to all electron pair generated due to incident light and thermal agitation then which will be greater due to incident light will be greater any reason for that s because the number of all electron pair practically that happens here i think i'll i to give that also reason no? space not there come for this so what is the reason i should give now i'll i'll copy this part to the lower one so that will get a space to hmm. 
due to all electron pressure generated due to insulin and thermal agitation. Now, which will be greater? The all electron pair generated due to incident light. I'll copy this. Now, th this is uh, very important. generated due to thermal agitation. Both will contribute, but the contribution due to I'm putting like this, then, on, then only we can see the variation in the curve. No? If it were reverse, all electron pay generated due to incident light very much less than all electron pay generated due to thermal agitation. Tell me like as a very intensity of light, do you see green colors response? No, we have seen only this. Got the idea? Green, this I think in CRT has discussed almost half page. Huh? But what it says you will never understand. <laughs> So I just put it in a little bit simplified way. More technically as I explained here, I just put it in a very simple way where you can, anybody reads, okay, understand here. Okay, now, no, okay, let's, uh, this is about the reverse bias. Okay, come out here, no? Let's come for forward bias. If I vary intensity or if I vary the wavelength, nothing will happen, I just get a curve. What is the reason? What is the reason? What, what you have to give reason? I'll take back this circuit. Well, I think not needed. Huh? Why to trouble you with more content? We'll, we'll just in the form of expression, I'll put it here. Now, uh, what is the forward bias? Forward bias current is due to our flow of majority carriers. Though light, incident light, if I increase the intensity, still I don't see any <laughs> variation in current. So the forward current will dominate, the forward current will be dominated by majority carriers. And we know that majority carriers, their number will be much more, no? Due to incident light, as, as incident light is incident on depletion layer, all electron pair will generate. Then if I see the number of majority carriers crossing junction, which will be far much, much greater than the minority carriers that are generated due to incident light, electron all pair. So therefore, the forward current depends only on what? Majority carrier. Though you vary the intensity of incident light, still we don't get. Or in the books, what they say, like a, the fraction of majority carriers crossing the junction will be very much greater than the fraction of minority carriers crossing the junction. So as let, let's assume this is a forward bias. More majority carriers will cross. No? Then I, I'll increase the intensity of light. All electron pairs will break up. Then more minor here also happen. More electron pairs are generated. But if I practically go and check, no, what we get the diffusion current will be far, far much greater than the drift current. You vary the intensity of light. I don't see any change here. The reason for that, the number of majority carriers crossing the junction, their number will be far much greater than all electron, the minority carrier current that is due to all electron pair. So therefore, for a photodiode, what is a photodiode? It should detect light, no? Shall I use it in forward bias or reverse bias to detect light? If you use in forward bias, though intensity of light changes, the curve will be like this. So I'll, I'll put explanation here. In spite of changing change in intensity of incident light. Uh, is it okay, no? So what is the reason we have to give for this? Hmm? This is, uh, everything is reverse bias term. No, let, let's discuss the forward bias. when photodiode is
forward biased then the forward current will not vary due to change in intensity of light incident on photodiode A any reason for this as as the forward current Uh, the the forward current will not vary due to change in intensity of light incident on photodiode as the flow of as the number of number of majority carriers flowing across a junction fraction a uh, light fraction mm, let, let me go for number one as the number of majority cats flowing across a junction will be for much greater than the number of greater than the flow of num number of minority carriers flowing through a junction so there there's a reason what i can put it okay though you increase intensity number of photons in the incident beam will increase number of covalent bonds will break up will increase all electron pair generator will increase but that number will be far much less than than what the diffusion current majority carriers so therefore photodiode should be what should be used in reverse bias to detect the light hmm? okay this is uh, there is a small idea hmm? okay last one solar cell the same thing Uh, instead of incident light, I'll call it as a solar light. Now we are not bothered because intensity of light I can't.